Okay, so this video is an example of how to use the rational roots theorem to find the zeros of a function, or at least to find the rational zeros of a function, and hopefully use that to help us find all the zeros of the function. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to write find all of, uh, or we need to list all the possible rational zeros. And remember the way that we do that is we look at the constant term. We look at the leading coefficient, and then we divide all of the factors of the constant term by all of the factors of the leading coefficient, and that gives us the list of rational zero, possible rational zeros. Okay, so um, what we can say here, we'll, we'll say that negative 8, the factors here are plus or minus, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, and plus or minus 8. So for my constant term, these are all the numbers that divide into it, positive and negative numbers. And then if I look at the uh, const the leading coefficient, um, the numbers that will divide that are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 5. Okay, so my possible zeros, possible, so you got to be very specific about this, possible rational zeros. We also, you know, we also give these a name. We we say, you know, this these are where the p's, right? And these are the q's. So let me fix that. Let me put the p's right here. These are my p's right here. And these are my q's right here. So p's over q's. That's that's what we say here. So p's over the q's. All right. So in this case, the possible ones are going to be. So we're going to divide all these p's by all of these q's, and so the first one we're going to divide by are the uh, the one plus or minus one into my p's. So dividing the p's by plus or minus one that just gives us the p's over again. So we have plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four, plus or minus eight. Okay. So that's done. Now we need to divide all of the p's by the plus or minus three. So we get plus or minus one third, plus or minus two thirds, plus or minus oops, four thirds, and then plus or minus eight thirds. Okay. Now we need to divide all of the p's by the five. And so, oh, I forgot one here, 15, I think. I forgot that one. Add that in there, plus or minus 15. Okay. Uh, anyway, so what was that? Okay, dividing all the p's by the plus or minus 5. So that if we do that, we get plus or minus 1 fifth, plus or minus 2 fifths, plus or minus 4 fifths, plus or minus 8 fifths. Okay, and then dividing everything by 15 now, we get plus or minus uh, 1 over 15, plus or minus uh, 2 over 15, plus or minus 3. No, 4 over 15, sorry, 4 over 15, and then plus or minus 8 over 15. Okay, so the idea is, is that if there are any rational zeros, these are the only ones that are going to work. Now keep in mind, I keep using the word rational, because if I just said possible zeros, then I'm saying, I'm, I'm actually really referring to real numbers, all the numbers that we can think of. But that's not the case. We're talking about rational zeros. Rational numbers are any number that can be written as a fraction. And so that's leaving out numbers like square root of 2, square root of 3, pi, you know, all those weird numbers. Okay, so we're talking about if there are any rational ones, these are the ones that are going to work. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to use synthetic division to uh, find um, at least hopefully one rational zero because notice that the degree of this polynomial, the original, is degree 3. And so if we find one zero, then in a sense we have factored the polynomial, and the quotient of that division um, from the synthetic division will be degree 2. So uh, in class, remember I discussed that probably the, the easiest point to start with is 1, and what you do with 1 is you pretty much add up the coefficients, because just imagine if I subbed in 1, 
Well, 1, when you cube it, is still 1. When you square it, it's still 1. If you multiply it times a number, it just is the original number. So anyway, the idea is, is that when you when you sub in 1, it's just going to be the coefficients of or all the coefficients. So if I add up the coefficients, notice in this case, that it certainly won't add up to 0. The idea is if, if you sub in the number, you get 0 as your answer. So if I sub in 1, I will not get 0. So there's no point on choosing um, 1 as a... Uh, uh, using one for syntax division. Now, here's another thing. What you could do, um, and, and well, let's just go jump ahead because I, I, the idea is, is that we're going to be testing these. So we're going to test negative one. We're going to test positive two. We're going to be testing negative two, positive four. And let's suppose that uh, we we try all three of those. We, well, all four, I guess, would be negative one, two, negative two, positive four. So those don't work. Let's suppose we already ran through those and those don't work. And let's suppose now we try negative four. So you say, okay, well, let's try x equals negative four. Okay. So we use negative four. Remember how this works? We take our our x value, negative four, and then what goes in here in this division is our our coefficients of the polynomial f of x. So we get 15, 61, 2, and negative 8. All right. Okay, so we bring down the 15. So the 15 comes down, so we get 15. Negative 4 times 15 is going to be negative 60. 61 minus 60, that's going to be 1. Negative, one times, uh, negative 4 times 1, that's going to be negative 4. 2 minus 4 is going to be negative 2. And then negative 4 times negative 2 is going to be positive 8. And then by magic, we ran into a zero. Now, I'm cheating, of course, a little bit. I, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time fumbling along finding zeros. So I already knew that negative four was going to work. So I'm cheating a little bit. But like I said, um, you, you start off by going through the whole numbers. And if you have to, then you go into the fractions. So hopefully we run into at least one. We find at least one whole zero. So um, here we go. We found one. And so what does that mean? Well, that means that now our polynomial f of x can be written as, remember, if negative 4 is a 0, that means that x plus 4 is a factor, right? So that means x plus 4 is a factor. This piece right here, this is our quotient. And so now, remember from the division algorithm, we can write f of x as the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder, okay? So the quotient is, these, these are... The coefficients, um, it's degree 2 because, once again, the original was degree 3, so it's going to be 15x squared plus x minus 2. Okay, and then plus our remainder. Remember, our, our remainder is 0, so we don't need to put it. But this is what I was talking about. You see, we've rewritten the original polynomial f of x as f of x equals um, x plus 4 times 15x squared plus x minus 2. So now we're almost done because notice that now all we have to do is factor this um, this quadratic. Okay, so let's see. I think if we play around here, so we have x plus 4 times, and then it looks like here, just doing some math, this should be what, 5x plus 2, and then we'll say, let's see what else, and then 3x minus 1. Let's check that out really quick. So we got 15x squared uh, minus 5x plus 6x, that's going to be x, and then 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Good. Here's the factorization. All right. So now what I want to do is once I have this factored, I want to find the zeros. Well, if it's already factored, we know that the zeros, um, we would just set each one of these factors equal to 0, and those would be the zeros, right? Well, we already knew one. We already knew that, we already knew that negative 4 was 1, 0. If we set the 5x plus 2 to 0 and then solve for x, we will get that x equals negative 2 over 5 is 0. And then if we set 3x minus 1 equal to 0, we're going to find that 1 third is a 0. Now, notice that each one of these zeros we found are rational numbers, and each one of these zeros is on that list of possible rational zeros. Okay, that's how, we've, that's how we um, can use the rational zeros theorem to factor a polynomial and use the factorization to find the zeros. All right.